Um, okay, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. We do have a very small group today, so please feel free at any point to stop um, and ask questions in the chat. Um, make sure you direct your chat to everybody. That way the whole, whole group today can see any questions and we'll make sure to address any of those questions that come up since we do have such a small team today. So welcome, um, good morning or afternoon, depending on where you are. This is our fall hypothesis workshop on using multimedia and tags in annotations. So the goal for today is that you will walk away from this workshop knowing how to add images, videos, hyperlinks, um, tags to your annotations and feel empowered to utilize those um, types of multimedia in your assignments with students. So let's actually start with introductions. If you don't mind using the chat to tell us your name, what school you're from, what di your discipline is, and whether or not you have any prior experience with hypothesis, that would be fantastic. Um, I will start us off. My name is Jessica Fuller. I'm located just outside of Portland, Oregon. I am a former English language arts teacher at the high school level. Um, who did not have hypothesis in my class, although I wish that I had. Um, and so I would love to hear uh, what your experience is. Today's workshop is geared more towards folks who have a little bit of experience with hypothesis. We're not going to dive in and do a deep um, explanation of how to use the tool from ground zero, but please feel free as we're going along today um, to pull up your own LMS. And if you have a hypothesis enabled reading available and you want to follow along, with what I'm showing as we walk through the different types of multimedia, it could be really useful to, to try it alongside me on your own monitor on the side if you're able to do that. <clears throat> Welcome, Jessica. Awesome. Welcome, Greg. Yes, Greg and I have been in a workshop together previously. Happy to have you here, both of you. Um, fantastic. Thanks so much. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit um, as we get started about what hypothesis is and what it accomplishes in the classroom, what's the value it brings to your teaching and to students. Um, and I'm actually going to launch a poll. Give me one second here. Um, I want to know what do you struggle with most when it comes to students reading? So you should see this poll appear on your screen. So what's the thing that you find most challenging as an instructor? When students are reading, is it challenging to know whether or not they did the reading, figuring out what they most or least understood, getting them to discuss the reading actively, pointing them to main ideas and concepts, getting them to make connections, something else, or maybe you actually don't struggle with this at all. Um, so if you don't mind taking a moment and just letting us know what the thing is that you find most challenging as an instructor. So it looks like um, universally, I'll share these results with you, getting students to discuss the reading actively is the biggest challenge. Um, and I can relate to that certainly um, in my experience as an instructor myself. So our goal today then is that you'll walk away feeling like hypothesis is gonna help you accomplish that better. So we say that there are three tenets of hypothesis basically, hypothesis, helps make reading more active, visible, and social. So when we're talking about getting students to discuss the reading more deeply and, and better, um, I think that falls actually into all three of these categories. So the first kind of note that we hear from instructors using the tool is that students who are using hypothesis are becoming more active in their reading, meaning they're engaging more deeply with the reading, they're reading more carefully, they are lingering on the text and exploring bits of text um, in a more in-depth way than they would otherwise. Because when you're asking them to socially annotate something, you are you know, prompting them to find pieces of the text that speak to them in one way or another and to engage with each other with that text. So hypothesis in that same way is making, making the reading visible to you as an instructor, so making it clear to you where they're having questions, what they're excited about, um, maybe what they're getting confused about. And you're also able to see the kinds of reactions they're having as they're engaging with each other, which is the third tenet of hypothesis is that hypothesis also makes reading social. So not only are students reading the text, 
more deeply. Um, they're also collaborating with each other. And so their thinking is being shared with each other. So hypothesis becomes a new place for students actually to relate to each other and to see each other's thinking. And I really like this um, quote from the student at Plymouth State who says, hypothesis is my literary Facebook. When I'm reading, I sometimes wonder, am I crazy? Does anyone actually understand this? With this brilliant tool, I know I'm not alone. So we have some resources for you here in the deck. Please feel free to come back to these. Um, we love to share resources with our schools and with our partners. Um, and so we have resources that are both for students to use if you want to use them in your classroom and give them to students um, in terms of guides for how to annotate well, what are the different kinds of annotations you can make with hypothesis. And then we also have resources made for instructors. So example assignments, um, examples of resource pages and ways you might use the tool in your classroom. So feel, please do feel free to take a look at any of these resources um, at any point in the future. All right, um, so my second question for you, I'm actually gonna launch another poll. I'd like to know what LMS do you use at your school? So you should see this question pop up for you. Um, I know we, we work with lots of different LMSs. I see we've got a canvas, very cool. Um, so today, again, we're not gonna dive into um, the technicalities of how to actually set up an assignment, but, and I'll go ahead and share our results. We've got Canvas and D2L here today, which is great. Um, I'll stop sharing that. Um, so Hypothesis integrates with a wide variety of different LMSs. And regardless of which LMS you use, the great thing about Hypothesis is that students are just signed into it automatically when they access your reading. Um, so the experience for them is, is seamless. And so regardless of the LMS you use, what we're gonna go over today applies um, to all LMSs. So when it comes to using multimedia and tags, um, the process for doing these things is gonna be the same. So if you want to take a moment now to go ahead and open up a hypothesis enabled reading in your own LMS, and so you can follow along with me, I think that's a great idea. If you're the kind of person who can't do two things at once super well, no worries. Um, you can always feel free to come back to the slide deck as there are instructions here in the slide deck for you as well. So here are resources for you, depending on which LMS you use. Um, we have all sorts of how-to guides on how to set up assignments, how to grade, um, et cetera. We have a really extensive knowledge base that's fantastic. So these are all links to areas of our knowledge base with resources for the different LMSs. So please feel free to make use of these. And again, feel free to uh, put questions in the chat at any point. Um, we are here for you. So let us know if you have any questions that come up as we get started. Okay, so we're gonna start by talking about using multimedia in annotations. Why would you do it? So what are some benefits to students for inviting them to use multimedia? Um, the benefits are many. So first of all, inviting students to use different kinds of media in their annotations does kind of support student choice. So it gives them agency in deciding what content they find interesting or, or giving them different options for ways to relate to the reading. So it can help motivate students in that way. Um, it can also just make reading more interesting and more engaging when you're asking them to find images or find video. Um, it brings reading to life in a new and interesting way, especially if you're reading maybe a more academic text or something that's not going to have images or maybe be harder for students to access or understand in many ways. Bringing in images, video, GIFs, et cetera, helps kind of liven up or, or make the, the story or the text feel more alive for students. It does also help them develop creative thinking skills. There's all sorts of different activities you can do with multimedia and helping um, or encouraging students to think more creatively as they're annotating. And then the final point here is that it helps turn things that are abstract or maybe dry into something very concrete. So if you have an image that helps illustrate something abstract in the article, that can really help students understand that, that um, content better. So what kinds of things can you put in an annotation? So obviously, students will typically annotate with text. 
Um, this is how they're having conversations with each other. They can reply to each other's annotations with text. But th these are the different kinds of multimedia that can be added um, with Hypothesis. So hyperlinks, and we'll, we're gonna go over how to add each of these things. Tags, we will talk about tags in a moment here. Emojis, sorry, that word is hidden under an emoji here, but you can do emojis with Hypothesis. You can add images, you can add GIFs, videos. And if you are um, a math instructor, you can actually do LaTeX equations in the annotation sidebar as well. So we also have guides that are linked here for how to add these different kinds of images and videos, but I'm gonna do step-by-step -step and show you how to do each of these things as well. All right, so we're gonna start actually by talking about adding hyperlinks. Hyperlinks can be useful to add because when students are having a conversation, it helps them show potentially where they got their information. Um, so they can link to another page on the internet and say like, I, I, I did my work, I found this information and here's where I found it. And then other students can use that URL potentially to also go check out other resources, um, connected pages, that, that also relate to the conversation that's happening. So it's sort of like a bibliographical note you can use within your annotation. Um, and I'm gonna actually back out of my slide deck here and go into a hypothesis enabled reading that I have here. It looks very dull right now because there's no annotations on it. Um, but I'm gonna show you how you would add a hyperlink. So I have this, web page here. It's just our hypothesis um, main landing page. And I'm just going to grab the URL by copying it. And if I go to make an annotation here, I'm just going to select some text. I'm going to click annotate. And then over here, there's this chain icon. So this is where I would insert a hyperlink. So to insert my link, I'm just going to click that icon. And it's gonna put this little bit of formatting in here for me in Markdown language. And nicely, it has highlighted in blue the spot where I'm supposed to insert my hyperlink. So because I've copied it from my other page, all I'm gonna do is hit Control B on my computer to replace that highlighted link with the URL I want to use. And then in these brackets here, I can actually type the text that I want to have display when my link appears. So I'm gonna say this is, Hypothesis annotation tool. Um, and you can always use this preview button. So when you're doing kind of fancier things and inserting multimedia in Hypothesis, it can be helpful to make sure that your formatting is correct before you actually post. So feel free to use the preview to make sure that it looks like what you wanted before you post it. Um, and I'm gonna actually just add a tag here, hyperlink and then I'm gonna post. So there you go. Um, it's pretty simple and the kind of formatting for adding different kinds of multimedia is gonna be similar as we move through each of these. Um, so yeah, you'll click the icon for what you want and it will highlight in blue for you the thing that you need to, to replace with your actual content. So, um, and again, please feel free to ask in the chat if you need me to slow down or show anything again, I'm happy to do that. So next is adding images. Um, and I like this GIF, I find this to be helpful. So it's very similar to adding the link. You start by clicking the image button here and it will give you again, a little bit of markdown language and you're gonna insert the URL to an image. So any content you use in an annotation in Hypothesis has to live somewhere on the internet. So you can't, for example, post a photo that lives on your computer, like on your desktop. It does have to be an image from the web and you're going to insert um, the URL, the image address for that image. So again, I'm gonna hop out of the slide deck and we'll go back into the reading. Actually, pardon me here. Um, let's start actually, let's say I wanted to use an image of books. Um, and I wanted to insert an image of books within my annotation. Here is the steps for what I would do to use that image. So this is a Google image search. I just searched for books and clicked on images here. The first thing I wanna do is actually pull the image URL. So what I'm gonna do is actually hover over an image 
and I'm using a mouse, so I'm just right clicking on it with my mouse. If you're using a Mac, you can also click with two fingers, or I believe you can command click to get this little menu. And then the thing you want to do is copy image address. So you don't want to copy the link address, you want the actual address to the image itself. So I'm going to click copy image address, and then I'm going to go back to my annotations. And I'm again going to make an annotation here, click annotate. I'm going to click the image button. I realize this might be very small for you, but I'm going to click the button to insert an image. And again, so it's highlighted in blue for me, um, the place that I need to insert my URL. So I'm going to click paste. Um, and then if I click preview, it shows me there's my nice image and I'm going to actually use a tag again. I'm going to tag it with the word image and click post. Any questions about that so far? All right, we'll keep going, but please do let me know if any questions come up. All right, so gifts. Gifts are fun. Um, it may be helpful for you to let students know if you do or don't want them to utilize gifts. I know that this kind of takes takes the conversation in a, a more fun direction, which can be great. Um, if you don't want students to use them, you might just say, you know, we prefer that this discussion be purely text based. If you do want them to use them, it's helpful to let students know um, ahead of time, like what you want them to do, what kind of content do you want them to bring to the assignment and why. So adding a GIF is actually the same process as adding an image. You're going to use the same image button. We don't have a separate GIF button. And then you're going to take your URL that points to the GIF and insert it in the, the space where you would typically use the image. Um, and I see a question from Mark. With images, are there any copyright issues we need to consider? So my understanding of this is that actually, because you're, you're not taking the image and bringing it to a different place, like you're not bringing it into Hypothesis, all you're doing is actually posting a link that points to the image in its original location, um, which means that it would not actually infringe copyright because you're just saying, this is the image that lives at this URL um, and students can, can refer back to that URL if they needed to find the original source for that image. Um, but other hypothesis folks, let me know if you have a better, more thorough answer on that than that I just gave. Um, that's a great question, Mark, thank you. Um, okay, so let's show how to add a GIF. So I personally use giphy.com to grab any GIFs. Um, I know there's various places students might find these. So Let's say um, if I'm starting from the beginning, I want to add a GIF, I would start by going here, for example, um, and I want to use this cute panda rolling around in my annotation. So if I click on the panda, I'm going to click on share and copy the GIF link right here, which I have done. I'm now going to go back to my annotation and annotate very meaningfully today. Um, all right, so I'm going to select my word that I actually want to annotate, and I'm going to use the image icon again. I'm going to paste in that GIF URL that I just copied. I'm going to preview it just to make sure it looks like I want. I'm going to just go ahead and tag it and post. So pretty straightforward if you know where to go to get your GIFs. Thank you, Becky. Yeah, could be best to ask students to add the source or, or citation for the image for where they found it. All right. Next is video, and video is actually the easiest um, type of multimedia to add to an annotation because you don't actually have to use any of these buttons at all. All you do is actually add the URL to the video. If you're using YouTube or Vimeo, um, it's pretty simple, hard to get it wrong with this one. So if I have, I have this helpful video on how to OCR um, a text to use for hypothesis, I'm actually just going to grab the URL from up here. Copy. I'll just create a new annotation. Just going to paste it right in. 
and it just embeds it directly into the annotation. Tag it and post. Pretty straightforward there. Um, I heard this great idea actually of, I think it was a French instructor that was having students read French text and then actually annotate in French and create videos of themselves speaking in French and then using those videos within the annotations to have an asynchronous conversation in French with each other, basically, which I think is so cool. Um, obviously, it does take extra technology for students to be able to record themselves, um, which we're not going to talk about today, but I love that that idea for one way to utilize video in, in foreign language, um, reading and writing and speaking. Pretty cool. All right. Um, any questions before we move on? All right. Pop back to our slide deck here. So now we're going to talk about tags. Um, tags are great. There's so many different things you can do with them. They're useful for getting students to like reflect on what they're doing while they're annotating. They're useful to just categorize thinking and categorize annotations. And they're useful if you're asking your students to read multiple texts throughout your course to kind of connect the dots um, when you're tracking a, a certain theme or idea or topic across multiple texts. You can use tags as a way to mark places in the different readings that all kind of relate to that same theme or idea or subject. Um, it's also a way students can connect to other students who are tracking the same things or the same topics, because as we'll see in a second, you can search for tags either within a single assignment or you can actually use the notebook to search for tags across multiple assignments. Um, and we'll look at the notebook actually later in the webinar. Um, and they can be useful if you're asking students to like um, categorize different elements of a text or find a theme, for example. Um, you could ask them to use a theme tag to mark um, a passage that in one way or another highlights what they see as the theme of that particular piece. Or you could ask them to tag like um, simile or metaphor or whatever it is you're, you're wanting them to look for as they're reading. So within the um, annotation sidebar, you can search for tags. Um, and I'll show you how to do that actually, but I'm gonna do that in a different assignment here uh, that has more student annotations. Let's use this one. I'm gonna load this. because this one I think has more, um, more comments. So for example, uh, you could ask your students to tag questions that they have with a question tag. And then you can search for, if I type in tag and then put in quotes question here, it's going to show, these are all my own annotations, typical. So it's going to show you um, any annotation that contains that particular tag. So here I used a simile tag. You could also look for um, every annotation that contains that simile tag. You can, you don't, even have to use this formatting to search for tags. You can also just search for the word um, to easily pull these up. Our search tool is pretty good and pretty powerful um, and can easily help you find these things. Back here. Okay, so let's say you've had your students annotate, you've created several readings in your course, they're using tags, they're using multimedia. I do wanna take a moment to talk about another feature of Hypothesis that is sometimes not known about or not utilized, it's kind of tucked away, it's a hidden gem, and that is the notebook. And the notebook um, is something that you can access when you have your Hypothesis enabled reading open, you access it by clicking on this little icon of a person and then you'll get a drop down menu that will have open notebook listed in the bottom. Um, and I'll show you this in a moment. But when you have the, the notebook open, it's going to show you every annotation in 
your entire course. So it's going to show annotations across multiple readings, all of the readings. Um, and it will sort them in reverse chronological order. And there will be a drop down where you can see each student's annotations. Again, and again, it's going to show all annotations across all readings. So you could either look at everything that the whole class has done, or you could zone in on one person. This can be helpful, for example, um, if you're wanting students to maybe at the end of the course, uh, reflect back on their thinking and potentially come up with an outline for a paper. Because what they'll see here is, is their thoughts as they relate to very specific places in the text. So as you're building a paper, you know, I remember back to my own learning experience. It was always challenging to have to think back in time and try to find text quotations that I could use for a paper. Because it's like, oh, I know I had all these thoughts on the reading, but like, I don't remember anymore, like what the, what the reading was, like what page was that on? What was the actual quote that I found interesting? So with this notebook, you're easily able to help students um, refer back to their own thinking on very specific places in the text they've already thought about previously in the course. So let's look at what that looks like. We'll go to this one, actually. So to get to the notebook, you're going to click this little person icon up here. Oh, no worries, Greg. Thanks for joining. Um, you're going to click the person icon and then click open notebook. So if you have your own reading open on your side, feel free to follow along with me. Um, click open notebook. If however, you don't have like annotations um, in the course or in your reading, you won't see very much here. So here, these are all the annotations that have happened in this course that I have set up here in my little demo course. I can scroll down and see them all. And then up in the top here is a drop down where I could see, you know, all of the contributions from unique students in my class. So all students have access to the notebook. It looks the same regardless of whether you're a student or an instructor. So if I click on Becky, I can see all of the things Becky contributed throughout the course, including replies to other annotations here. So Becky could use this then to start building an outline. Um, seeing the particular places in the text that she had thoughts um, and comments. Any questions about the notebook or how to get to it? Um, if so, let us know in the chat. Okie doke. So I wanted to leave some time for folks to think about how you might utilize multimedia or tagging or the notebook um, in your own teaching. So I want you to think about some readings that you typically assign students in your course. Um, what's one way you could bring multimedia or tagging into that reading? Um, what's an activity you could use um, to ask students to annotate in a more creative or multimedia type way. And I would love to hear thoughts if, if people are comfortable sharing in the chat any ideas that are coming to mind. Um, we would love to hear from you. Question from Jessica. Because the image, video, GIF, et cetera, is online, what happens if the original owner deletes the online image? Will it still show up on the article? That is a great question. And other folks should correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. But it would I believe the content will no longer show in Hypothesis either because it's just linking directly to that content as it exists online. But Becky, et cetera, let me know if I have that wrong. Um, because we're not hosting it, so we're not bringing it into Hypothesis in any other way, it would disappear if that content disappears from the web. Yeah, if the file is deleted, there's no way for us to show it, but that's a great question. So if you have ideas or thoughts, please do let us know in the chat um, or not. Um, our hope is that th this content today helped 
kind of stimulate your thinking and creativity in terms of different ways to ask students to bring in different kind of content into their thinking as they are doing the reading for your class. I'll give us just like a minute here um, to think about this. And yeah, please also feel free to ask questions if you have any. These have been good questions today. I'm actually going to launch a poll. Um, I'm going to ask, how are you feeling about using a hypothesis? So think about this in terms of how are you feeling about using hypothesis with multimedia? Um, do you feel a little overwhelmed by it? Does this seem pretty straightforward with some practice? Um, are you feeling really excited? intrigued, but maybe you're not sure how you would use it or some other feeling. I'd love to hear kind of what, what you're feeling at this point in the workshop. I'll go ahead and share these results. It looks like, yeah, we have folks who think they'll be okay with some practice. Excellent. That's what we like to hear. Um, I wanted to, to close off our webinar today by pointing you towards resources um, because once you dive in and are actually trying any of this out, if you do have questions or even just want someone to bounce ideas off of, just know that we as the Hypothesis Success Team are here to help you be successful. That's, that's our job. That's what we're excited about. So if you want more ideas or more thoughts, just know we have plenty of them. We meet with lots of instructors who share their amazing ideas with us. And so we love to share those ideas back out to other folks. Because um, we do work with many partner institutions, as you can see on this slide, um, who share all sorts of cool content with us. So if you do ever need technical support, this link will take you to our wonderful knowledge base that is so thorough. I use it myself all the time because it's so helpful. Um, we offer support to instructors and staff and students if they run into issues using the tool, um, which doesn't happen often, but if it does, just know this is our um, support email address you can feel free to use. But then pedagogical support is really what we, as the folks who are here on the webinar today, are excited to help you with. So we are here to meet with you one-on-one -on -one if you would like. We do one-on-one -on -one instructional design consultations. We can help you set up your assignments. We can help you generate new ideas for how you could maybe use multimedia in your particular course for whatever discipline you teach in. There are all sorts of guides, again, you can utilize. And then we do offer webinars and workshops for your school in particular. So if you would like us to come and do a workshop just for folks at your particular institution, that's what we love to do. We can customize those to whatever content is going to be most helpful for the folks that you work with. And then we have two amazing um, kind of ongoing workshops and video type um, series that I, I like to talk about last, and that is Liquid Margins and our partner workshops. Um, if you click on this link to Liquid Margins, it'll take you to a web page um, where you can see all of the past episodes of Liquid Margins, which is our video show. What we do is once per month, we will actually have kind of a panel discussion type video show with various partners talking about social annotation across the disciplines and in all sorts of different contexts and for different purposes. And it is fantastic. If you ever just need ideas or inspiration, please feel free to check out Liquid Margins because it's amazing. Um, and then we also run a weekly partner workshop every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And this is a workshop that Anyone at your institution who is welcome to join and just come to on a weekly basis. We vary the content week by week. So if you click this link, you can see um, a list of what our upcoming workshops are. Like this one you're at today, obviously, is a partner workshop. So we do them on all sorts of different um, subjects like creative ways to use the tool. We will do intro ones for using hypothesis and different LMSs as well. Um, and this is the email address for our success team. Um, please feel free to use this. You can also, if you know who your uh, success manager is, you can email um, them at any time as well. And uh, let us know if you have any final questions. Um, we can hang out for a few minutes if there are additional things you want to chat about.
or questions about the tool generally or, or anything at all, um, let us know. And thank you so much for joining today. That's all we have for today. We appreciate you taking the time.